All right, so let's demonstrate using Mu to deploy a Spring Boot application to ECS. So we see here's our uh, microservice. We've already got our Docker file set up. We see that we've got our Gradle file so that we can compile the code. And then we see um, the various uh, classes necessary for the service. Uh, we were using Liquibase for managing our database, so that uh, definition files there. We've got some unit tests to find. Um, so why don't we go ahead and take a look at the Docker file. And we see that it's pretty straightforward. It uh, builds from the Java image. Uh, all it does is takes the jar and um, adds it. And then for the entry point, it just runs java-jar. So we run mu in it, and that's going to create two files for us. It's going to create a built uh, mu.yaml file, which we see here. And so we need to add some stuff to the file it generates. Specifically, we want to specify uh, Java 8 for the code build image. Then we edit the build spec file and tell it to use Gradle build for the build command. Build spec is a standard code build, or, uh, code build uh, uh, file for defining your project. So we see our two new files, build spec.yaml and mu.yaml. So we go ahead and commit those, push those up to our um, source repository, in this case we're using GitHub, and then we run the command mu pipeline up. And what that does is it creates a cloud formation stack for managing our code pipeline and our code build uh, projects. So it's going to prompt us for the GitHub token. This is the access token that you've defined inside GitHub so that code pipeline can access your repository. So we provide that token and then we see that it's creating various things like IAM roles for code build to do its business and uh, creating the actual code build project that's going to be used. There's a, quite a few different code build projects for building and um, testing and deploying. So now we can run the command mu service show and what that's going to show us is um, that there is a pipeline now created. We see it's just started in the first step. Let's go ahead and open up the pipeline in the console and we see that sure enough, here's our pipeline. The source stage is running. Uh, and then we see there's a build stage with the artifact and image actions in it. That's where we compile and then build our Docker image. There's an acceptance stage and then a production stage, both of which do a deployment and then testing. So jumping back over here to the command line, we can run mu service show. And we see that uh, we are in the source action currently running. And that's just going to take a minute before um, we now trigger the uh, artifact action of the build stage. And so that's where we're actually doing the compiling. So there's a command we can run here, mu pipeline logs. Um, and we add the dash f so that we follow the logs. What happens is all of the output from code build gets sent to CloudWatch logs. And so the mu pipeline logs command allows us to tail CloudWatch logs and watch the activity in, in real time. So we see that... Um, our Maven uh, artifacts are being resolved, our dependencies, and then we see build success. So our artifact has been built and our unit tests have passed. Uh, so it's just going to take a second here for code build to go ahead and upload the artifact and then trigger the pipeline to move to the next stage, which is our image stage. In the image stage, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to run Docker build against our uh, artifact, create a Docker image, it's then going to push that image up to ECR. Um, it'll also manage creating that ECR, uh, that um, ECS repository, uh, if it doesn't exist yet, through CloudFormation stack. So we go ahead and run mu pipeline logs, and we could see the image action running. We see we're pulling down the Docker base image, that Java image. And then there's our um, Docker build, and now we're pushing back up to ECR. I'll take just a minute to upload that new Docker image with our uh, Spring Boot application on it. And that's completed successfully. So now if we jump back over to Mu Service Show, uh, just give it a sec and we should see that we will progress beyond the build stage and into the acceptance stage. In the acceptance stage, there will be two actions. First, a deploy action that's going to use the image that was created and uh, create a new ECS service for it. And so that's what we see going on here. Um, what, what you'll notice in just a sec here, right there, what's happening is uh, first it's, it's making sure the environment is up to date. So 
the ECS cluster and the auto scaling group for it and all the instances for ECS. It's making sure that's up to date. It's also then updating any databases that are defined and then finally deploying the service. And so what we see here is there's a create in progress. The status of the deployment to the dev environment is in progress. So there's a cloud formation stack being deployed. Uh, I go ahead and run this command new service logs, just like there's logs for the pipeline. All the logs for your service are sent to CloudWatch logs. So here we're watching the logs for our service starting up. Uh, these are the Spring Boot output messages. If you used Spring Boot before, these should look familiar. Um, but this is very helpful for troubleshooting an application, being able to see its logs in real time. Um, so the deployment is complete by the logs we saw that it was up. So we're going to go and look at the environment here. We do an environment list, we see the dev environment. And when we show it, we can see the EC2 instance associated with it. And we also see the base URL for the ELB. So I'm going to go ahead and run a curl command against that, adding the bananas URI at the end of it and pipe that to JQ just to make it look pretty. And sure enough, there we see we get a successful response. So our app's been deployed successfully and we see that we are in the approved stage um, and it's waiting for approvals. So uh, we've completed the acceptance stage. Let's take a look at CloudFormation to just see what all um, Mu has created for us. So we see there's a whole bunch of stacks over here. Remember, everything that Mu does is managed through CloudFormation. There's no other database or anything uh, behind me. It's just native AWS resources. So, for example, if we look at the VPC that was created for the dev environment, we see all the things you would expect to see routes, um, network ACL subnets, uh, there's a NAT gateway defined, um, the VPC itself, and then if we go up to the cluster, we see the um, auto scaling groups for the ECS container instances. We see the um, load balancer, the application load balancer that's defined for the environment, all the necessary security groups, and then there's some scaling policies to scale in or out on that auto scale group uh, based on how much, how many uh, tasks are currently running. This is the service, the banana service that's been deployed to dev. We see the IAM roles, task definition, and whatnot for the service. Now, one thing we didn't do previously was we didn't do any testing. So what you can do is you can go ahead and create this file uh, called buildspec-test.yaml and what will happen is anything that you define in this test YAML will be run as a, um, a test action after the deployment's made. It's standard code build, um, build spec file. So in this case, we're going to use a tool called Newman. Uh, Newman is a Node.js uh, command line tool for running Postman collections. Postman is a tool that GitHub created for uh, doing testing of RESTful APIs. So we've got our REST uh, our, t uh, our Postman collections are defined, so we're configuring this to run Newman for our test. We'll have to make a change to the MU file. We have to configure the acceptance environment to use a Node.js code build image. Uh, and so that's what we've done there. So um, with those two changes, we should be able to run MU pipeline up that will update the code build project to use the Node.js image. Um, and then once our pipeline is up to date, we'll be able to commit our uh, change, which is that build spec test file. And once we push that up, the pipeline will start running again. This time, uh, tests will actually run and we'll get some uh, assurance that the code uh, is, is ready to go on to production. So we make that change, we push it. And then if we look at the service, we'll see that the source action has triggered and we'll just let this run for a while. The uh, artifact, the whole pipeline is going to have to run, but things like the artifact and image um, won't really cause any change because we didn't actually change the source code, but those will go ahead and run anyway. So we are now in the uh, image stage. We're taking the new jar file and building a uh, Docker image from it, pushing that up to ECR. Uh, we've now hit the deploy stage. So the latest Docker image is being used for the ECS service. Um, once that completes, we will run that new pipeline logs again to watch the code build project uh, doing the testing. And here we go. So we see the testing is running. Uh, it's going to run npm install to install our dependencies, namely the Newman tool. And then we see some results. So I see status code 200. That looks good. 
Under the failed column, I see a bunch of zeros, which looks great. And then I see build success. So not only has our application been deployed to ECS, but we've also been able to test it. Um, and, and now those tests will be run as a part of every execution of the pipeline as part of every commit. Now, the other thing that we'll recognize here is this application that we built, uh, it, it, it's managing our inventory of bananas, but what it doesn't have is a real database behind it. We're just using the H2 database that uh, is available with Java. So let's go ahead and make a change here. Let's uh, configure Mu to actually uh, have a real database. So with Mu, that's as easy as defining a database. Uh, you give it a name. You could specify other things like a type and whatnot, but we'll default with the Aurora RDS. Um, and then you're going to want to pass some environment variables. So we will need to pass the database connection information to our Spring app. Since we're using Spring Data Source, it's just a matter of defining these three environment variables. And you'll notice that the username, password, and the endpoint are not actually in the Mu YAML file. We don't want those things in there. What will happen is Mu will create those for us, and then they will make them available as CloudFormation parameters that we can reference through the dollar sign uh, notation that CloudFormation offers. Okay, so now that we've got that change made, go ahead and add our Mu file and uh, commit the change and push it up, which should trigger a new run of the pipeline. And again, we've got to go through all those earlier actions just to ultimately get to the deploy action where the database will be, the RDS database will be created. Now again, you could choose any RDS database type, but uh, we're using Aurora by default. Now one question is, well, how does the password get defined? So the way this works is we use a service that um, AWS has called Parameter Store, which manages secrets. Um, and uh, when Mu starts up, it checks if there's a, a password defined. If not, it generates a random 16 character string, adds it to Parameter Store, and then later on when it deploys the service, it pulls it out of Parameter Store and passes it in as an environment variable. Um, those parameters are encrypted with KMS, a key management system, so they are secure. Okay, so looking at the logs now from the service, these are our Spring Boot startup logs, what I'm expecting to see is that rather than um, seeing H2 as the dialect, there you go, we see MySQL is the dialect for the connection. That tells me that Spring Boot detected our environment variables and Spring Boot recognized that we are in fact trying to talk to MySQL. Um, here, let me go ahead and highlight that there. So this tells us that our application is in fact connecting to a MySQL database which is provided um, by RDS and wired up uh, via Mu. Um, so we can look at our service again and watch the pipeline run and we can get some confirmation that we didn't break anything because we have those tests as a part of our pipeline now. So we'll let this go and um, our tests are running. Once that completes, we will have uh, a good, uh, good feeling that this uh, change is ready to promote to production. Well, thanks for watching, and check out getmu.io to learn more.